Hi everyone, so I am a social psychologist and I'm here to say a few words about how social psychology can contribute to an understanding of events in history. And the first thing to say is that the events of 1831 were widely, have been widely characterised as mindless, uh, as meaningless and as uh, simply criminal. Uh, and that has counted for a uh, the dominant explanation for what people actually did during the um, the riots and protests and other events um, following the Reform Act. Now, similar things have been said or repeatedly said um, in relation to contemporary riots, uh, whether it's 18, uh, 1981, 1985 or 2011, the most recent wave of riots in the UK. Very similar uh, ways of um, characterising behaviour. People become less intelligent when they get involved in crowds. They lose control. Um, they are indiscriminate. Uh, they will attack anything because uh, they become less intelligent in crowds, uh, less able to reason, or they simply uh, give in to criminal impulses as individuals because they are made up of individuals, the crowd is made up of individuals. Now the problem with these kinds of explanation is that they can't really explain some of the most important features of riots, um, such as how do they start, why do some crowd events become violent and others don't, why do, uh, why do why are particular targets selected in riots. If you look at the pattern of behaviour in even the most violent riot you will see not every object, not every uh, property is attacked, not every person um, that uh, rioters encounter is attacked. There are specific targets, often it's the police, often it's particular properties on the high street, other properties tend to be protected, um, uh, certain kinds of uh, vehicles might be attacked, others won't be. Um, so these existing explanations can't really uh, uh, deal with that and in our recent work we've um, tackled another one of these um, popular explanations, cliches if you like, that are mobilised to try to say something about um, behaviour in riots uh, and that is the notion of contagion, the notion that um, behaviour, particularly violent behaviour, spreads uh, relatively easily between people in these events and spreads relatively easily from event to event, from city to city. Uh, people are simply exposed to the uh, to the right, to others' behaviour and they, they join in with it very easily. Uh, we see notions like the copycat is, uh, was, uh, was used to explain what happened in 2011. Now the problem here is that not everybody joins in. Not all cities um, join in either. Riots do spread, it's true, from, from some cities to others. But not all of them. So we need uh, a different kind of explanation. We need to explain the limits and why some um, towns, cities join in before others. Now, when we looked at um, the spread of rioting in 2011, one of the um, initial um, uh, areas of spread was from Tottenham, where the rioting began, where Mark Duggan was killed, um, to South London. And the first place that writing spread to in South London was Brixton, and it spread to other areas in South London later. Why did it go to Brixton first? Well, when participants were interviewed about their experience, they referred often spontaneously to a what they saw as a kind of common shared history with people in Tottenham. So people in Brixton said, that could be me, that could be us. Uh, we share a, a history of injustice, we share the same relationship with the police and so they started joining in because they, they felt they were the same as the people in, in, in Tottenham. So there was a sense of identity and that concept of identity and the meanings associated with the events in Tottenham were important in understanding why Brixton people joined in and others didn't because others in other um, London boroughs were less uh, made those kinds of comments much less frequently. Uh, they would give other kinds of explanation. Uh, hatred of the police was a common premise 
and they um, joined in later when the police were seen to be disempowered by the earlier events. So much more complex than simply saying contagion. And we think that these concepts I've been talking about, particularly shared identity, maybe empowerment, but certainly the whole approach looking at participants, uh, the meanings that they attribute, their understandings of their social world, um, can help us develop a better understanding of events in 1831, what people actually did, who joined in, than simply characterising them as mindless and criminal.